In this video, we are going to look at two more involved examples of linear programming problems. The first problem is on your screen. Pause the video and read the problem, and when you come back, we will talk about how to set this up. To assign the variables for this problem, we have to recognize what we have freedom over. And the freedom we have in a problem like this is the amount of desks we ship from each of our warehouses. So we have Bloomington to Kokomo and Bloomington to Indy, and then Lafayette to Indy and Lafayette to Kokomo. Four different shipments, so we're going to have four different variables to work with. Each variable will be the number of desks we send from one warehouse to one location. So we start by letting x be the number of desks that we ship from Lafayette to Kokomo. If we take a look at the problem, the Kokomo customer needs 400 desks. So if we're sending x of them from Lafayette, the remainder has to come from Bloomington. In other words, 400 minus x desks have to ship from Bloomington to Kokomo. We can do the same thing for the other destination. If y is the amount of desks we're shipping from Lafayette to Indianapolis, then, since the customer needs 250 desks, we'll have 250 minus y to ship from Bloomington to Indianapolis. Now that we have our four variables, some of which depend on the others, we can begin setting up our constraints. To set up our constraints, we take a look to see what different things the problems tell us. We know that the Lafayette warehouse has 500 desks and the Bloomington warehouse has 200 desks. We also know that we want to minimize the delivery costs. This part will give us our objective function. And so we begin by looking at each of the deliveries and seeing what constraints we have on them. Because the Lafayette warehouse has 500 desks, we know the total number of desks shipped out of Lafayette can be no more than 500. In other words, x plus y has to be less than or equal to 500. We can do the same for the other warehouse. Bloomington has 200 desks to ship out, and so we can write down our constraint. Notice that we are going to use the full variable, the 400 minus x and the 250 minus y, as the amount of desks shipped out of Bloomington and Kokomo. Finally, the amount of desks that we ship can't be negative, so all four variables have to be greater than or equal to zero, including the full variables for the desks out of Bloomington. Finally, to make this something we can actually work with, we simplify all of the constraints. And so, collecting all of our x's and y's against all of our numbers, we can simplify the constraints to a form that we can actually work with. Lastly, we need the objective function. And so we're going to minimize the delivery costs, as asked for by the problem. The delivery cost is going to be based on the table that we have and each of the variables. So we construct a delivery cost. All four variables work exactly the same way. And notice that you use the full variables for the desk shipped out of Bloomington. So 251 times 400 minus x for Bloomington to Kokomo. And the same for Bloomington to Indianapolis. Lastly, we simplified the objective function so that we have a nice function to work with. Easy to plug our vertices in once we find our vertices. This is the picture for the feasible set for this problem itself. The rest of the problem solves out fairly similarly, so you can go through the rest of it and actually find the minimum. The second type of problem is an investment problem. As before, take the time to pause the video, read the problem, and then we'll talk about how to set this up. To assign the variables for this type of problem, we're going to look at our freedom, and our freedom is in the number of shares we can buy. And so x is the number of shares of TRU, y is the number of shares of TNQ, and this is where we run into a problem. We want to let z be the number of shares of ATC. However, we can't solve a problem with three variables. Therefore, we have to use the problem information to take the z variable and write it in terms of x's and y's. So in this case, we're going to use the investment data. 
and that means the price times the amount of shares that we have, all added together, has to be the amount of money we want to invest. In other words, $3,000. And so we take this, we solve it for z, and that's something you can all do. And z is 1 33rd times 3,000 minus 63x minus 51y. Once we have this as our z, um, we simplify that just a little bit, and we get some sort of expression in terms of both x and y as our number of shares of ATC that we want to invest. To make the constraints, we already have a table, and so we'll label the table with the variables that we're using, and then we'll create our constraints that way. Looking at this problem, there really is only one constraint on our variables. We want to earn at least $50 in dividends. And so we write down the constraint from our table. The number of dividends, or the amount of dividends, is given by this function here. Notice that we use the entire expression for z in place of z. And so this will be the total number of dividends. If we want to simplify this a little bit, we collect all the x's and all the y's together. And we need a right-hand side. And so looking at the dividends, this has to be greater than or equal to 50 which means taking all our numbers to the same side, this will be greater than 31.82. Finally, there's the positivity constraints. X is positive, Y is positive, and Z also has to be positive. Again, using the entire expression for Z. We simplify this a little bit. It's not really simplified much, but we take the X's and Y's to the same side, move the number to the other. Finally, to get the objective function, we want to see what we need to maximize or minimize. And in this case, we want to maximize the number of shares, just the number, not the value. And so, the number of shares of TRU is X, number of shares of TNQ is Y, number of shares of ATC is the entire expression that we had for Z. Simplifying this, collecting the X's and the Y's, we get this expression, and this will be our objective function. 